Welcome dear audience, Uday and scholars here, I am Dr. Ramjad Ali. Dear scholars, once uh, Harvard Hoover said uh, uh, that blessed are the young for they shall inherit national debt. And once George uh, Carlin said that I think we ought to just go ahead and make zillion a real number, gazillion two. A zillion could be ten million trillions and a gazillion could be a trillion zillion. It seems to me it's time to do this. Dear scholars, when a government spends more than it collects in taxes, uh, it has a budget deficit which it finances by borrowing uh, from the private sector. The accumulation of past borrowing is the government debt. The debate about the appropriate amount of government debt in the United States is as old as the country itself. Alexander Hamilton believed that uh, national debt, if it is not excessive, will be uh, to us a national blessing, while James Madison argued that a public debt is a public curse. Indeed, the location of the uh, national's capital was chosen as a part of a deal in which the federal government assumed the revolutionary war debts of the states because the northern states uh, had uh, larger outstanding debts the capital was located in the south in this video we are uh, going to discuss the size of the government debt uh, government debt and a uh, budget uh, deficit so let's discuss about the size of the government debt okay let's begin by putting the government debt in perspective in 2008 the debt of the u.s federal government was uh, 5.8 trillion dollar if we divide this number by uh, 305 million and the number of people in the United States, we find that each person's share of the government debt was about $19,000 for each. Obviously, this is not a trivial number. Few people sneeze at 19,000, yet if we compare this uh, debt uh, to the roughly 1.5 million dollar a typical person will earn over his or her working life uh, the government debt does not look like uh, the uh, catastrophic uh, it is uh, sometimes made out to be one way to judge the size of government debt is to compare uh, it to the amount of that other countries have accumulated. So here we have some facts and figures related uh, to the uh, in-depthness of uh, some governments. Okay, how indebted are the world's uh, government? So here we have some countries and uh, uh, government debt as a share of uh, GDP. Uh, this uh, table shows the amount of government debt for 28 uh, major countries expressed as a percentage of uh, each country's GDP. At the top, you can see that uh, in the list, uh, the heavily indebted countries of uh, Japan, uh, Italy, following Greece. Okay, which have accumulated a debt that exceeds uh, annual GDP. At the bottom, you can see the Australia, uh, which uh, have accumulated relatively small debts. The United States is not uh, 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 far from the middle of the pack. Uh, by international standards, uh, the U.S. government is uh, neither especially uh, profligate or especially frugal uh, towards the uh, debt. Over the course of U.S. history, the indebtedness of the federal government has varied substantially. So let's see the, the historical uh, indebtedness of the U.S. So here we have the ratio of the government debt to the GDP since uh, 1790. Okay, uh, this uh, figure shows the ratio of the federal debt to GDP since uh, 1791 to 2008. 
the government debt relative to the size of the economy varies uh, uh, from close to uh, zero in 1830s uh, to a maximum uh, one zero uh, seven percent of GDP in uh, uh, 1945. Historically, the primary cause of increase uh, in the government debt is war. So here we have different wars periods. Okay, uh, the debt uh, GDP ratio rises sharply during the major war periods and falls slowly during the peace time. Many economies uh, think that uh, this historical pattern uh, is the appropriate way to run uh, fiscal policy as we will discuss uh, more fully in our coming videos. Deficit financing of war appears uh, optimal uh, for reasons uh, of both tax smoothing and generational equity. Okay, one uh, uh, here understand that a large increase in um, uh, in government debt uh, uh, in peace time began in the early uh, 1980s. So see here, early 1980s we have a rise when uh, uh, the president was elected uh, in 1980s. He was committed to uh, reducing taxes and uh, increasing military spending. These policies coupled with uh, a deep recession uh, attributable uh, to tight monetary policy began a long period of substantial uh, budget deficit. The government debt expressed as a percentage of GDP roughly doubled from 26% uh, uh, in 1980 to 50% in 1995. So see here we have a rise. The United States had never uh, before experienced such a large increase in government debt during a period of peace and prosperity. Many economists have criticized this increase in government debt uh, as imposing an unjustifiable burden on future generations. The increase in uh, government debt during uh, the 1980s caused uh, significant concern uh, among many policy makers as well. The first uh, President uh, Bush raised uh, taxes to reduce the deficit, uh, breaking his uh, read my lips, uh, no news taxes campaign pledged and according to some uh, political commentators casting um, him re-election uh, in 1993 when the president clinton took office he raised taxes yet again and uh, these increases in taxes together with spending restrained and rapid economic growth due to the uh, information technology boom caused the budget deficit to shrink and eventually uh, turn into budget surplus. The government debt fall uh, from 50% of GDP uh, in 1995. So here we have a fall in budget deficit as well and debt as well. Okay, to 33% in 2009. One. So since 2001, there is a substantial decrease in uh, government debt. When President George uh, W. Bush uh, took office in 2001, the high-tech boom in uh, the stock market was uh, uh, reversing course and the economy was heading into recession and uh, economic downturns automatically cause a tax revenue to fall and push the budget uh, towards deficit. In addition, tax cuts to uh, combat the recession and increased uh, spending for homeland security and wars in Afghanistan and Iraq further increased the budget deficit which averaged about 3% of GDP during his tenure uh, from 2001 to 2008. Government debt rose uh, from 33% to 41% of GDP during that period. When President Barack Obama 
moved into the White House in 2009 and the economy was in the midst of a deep recession. Tax revenues were declining as the economy uh, shrank. Uh, in addition, uh, one of the new president's uh, first actions uh, was to sign a large uh, fiscal stimulus uh, to prop up the aggregate demand for goods and services. The federal government's budget deficit was projected to be 12% of GDP in 2009 and 8% in 2010, levels not experienced since uh, World War II. The, the debt uh, uh, GDP ratio was projected to continue rising at least uh, in the near term. In his first budget proposal, President uh, Obama proposed uh, re reducing the budget deficit uh, over time to 3% of GDP in 2013. Regardless, these events ensured that uh, uh, the uh, economic effects of government debt would uh, remain a major policy concern in the years to come as well. So this is all about uh, uh, the size of uh, the government debt and uh, government debt and uh, budget deficit so see you with another video ciao